Lovely tackle, lads. What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel and to what is my most requested video. It is a complete defendant tutorial. So I've been working on this for quite a while. You'll see a lot of research and a lot of clips go into this. We're going to take a look at five key defending tips, right? So we're going to start by setting our team up. Then we're going to look at manual defending, auto defending, stopping easy goals, and one key secret tip right at the end. So I think if you can get even two of the three here, right? You, you know, if you want to be a complete defender, you need to be able to mix and match every one of these. You need to be able to mix auto defending with manual defending. You need to know when to slide tackle, when to, you know, make a challenge. But you need to be very consistent, right? So the first thing to do before you even try to take on the upper divisions, right? Whether you're a newcomer or whether you're somebody that's, you know, played the game a bit, but has kind of hit their limit or hit their ceiling, right? You need to decide what formation and tactics you need, right? So for a play style like this, that is going to be all about, you know, either out wide or possession based players. You need to have players that are comfortable with the ball. It suits possession based players with flexible positioning and lots of wide play. And then we also have the quick counter central players, right? So lots of one touch passing, no dribbling, not keeping any foot on the ball. Literally the minute you have it, it's gone. Central play with fast AI movement. So what I mean by fast AI movement is before your AI defenders, you know, your opponent's defenders can react because you can only control one player at a time. You're going to be moving the ball so quick that it's going to, you know, make your opponent um, just not be able to cover gaps, you know, and you're going to be using these three slots here. So I am rushing through this a little bit less, but I don't want the video to be like 20 minutes long. So I'm going to have a load of clips here instead of just talking about it, right? Because I've analyzed a lot of stuff in this one. So we're going to start with manual defending, right? Now to me, with the way that I play, I like to keep control as much as possible. So I do a lot of manual defending. Now, when I'm talking about manual defending, I'm talking about reacting manually. As you see here, the ball breaks down, up and McKenna is going to cover the gap and we're going to get this and we're going to be aggressive and win it back. So this is when you are actually manually defending yourself. You're pressing forward yourself, you're player switching yourself, you're making the tackle yourself. You're not just leaving it be automated by the defense, which we'll get to in a second. And I'm going to show you clear examples here, right? You are going to make mistakes. The game is going to screw you every now and again, but it's all about how you react. Look at the gap in the middle there. I need to be aggressively getting that ball back or else I'm going to be open for the touch and go. And it could be a goal scoring chance. Instead, we close the gap. You'll see here the same. I kind of get drawn out into the middle of the pitch uh, or from away from the middle of the pitch. But when it comes centrally again, we're going to get our foot in. A same thing here. It's going central. We're in the position just to be able to block it off. It's not like advanced stuff. Obviously, you can do slide tackles like that and you can make decisions based on where you are as you play the game and as you learn the mechanics of the game. You will obviously learn when to press and when not to press. And as you get better and better defensively, you will be able to kind of like stand up opponents and they won't really know what to do, right? Because a lot of the time, man, you're kind of waiting for your opponent to make a move and then you obviously close it down, whether they play a long ball, a short ball, tiki-taka, or one touch. A lot of the upper class players will play one touch, so you need to be able to, you know, get that ball back when you need it back, right? Now, I would say that positioning is probably the key to manually defending. You need to be very comfortable with the sticks or on the sticks with the pad in your hands. You also need to be able to read gaps, right? So when you are obviously defending, you're defending the player's run, his potential, you know, run into space, and also where you think the ball is going to end up. So it does take a little bit of practice and it does take a lot of patience of, you know, the game is going to screw you sometimes, but if you are consistent, you will be able to do it. Next up, we've got auto defending, right? So I definitely think that auto defending is way too overpowered. I am including it in this because it is a complete defending tutorial. But auto defending, when we discuss that, right, when we talk about auto defending, is, is, is kind of a mixture between two things. We've got the holding L2, which is the contextual blocks and, you know, the matchup kind of. And then we also have the physicality and the team press kind of uh, way of defending, right? Now, if you come up against a lot of top um, division guys, they are going to be able to pressure you a lot better than, you know, somebody that, that hasn't played the game a lot. Because this is what works. This is kind of what's overpowered at the moment. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of like a thing, don't hate the player, hate the game. Um, it's, it's one of those things that I think that when they do start to like knock this down a bit, I do think that it will be a little less um, overpowered. And I think that people are going to have to go back to defending a lot more manually, right? 
So this is split between matchup, contextual blocks, and team pressure. You can see the default control scheme there, as I've highlighted here, and also with the default defense setup here as well with the controller, where you can configure it that yourself or configure it yourself. Now, this is an example here with Rice. We're holding L2. As the ball is played past him or into the passing lane, when you hold L2, the matchup, this is going to make a block or it's going to attempt to make a block. Now, there are downfalls to this as well. If you are playing against somebody like this, and me especially, when I'm a possession-based player and I don't rush anything, my eyes light up when I come up against a guy that's very automated, that's letting the game defend for him, right? Because it's all about kind of chasing the ball around like a headless chicken. Not saying there's no skill in it, but it is mostly about setting your team up very centrally as we showed at the start of the video and then just waiting for your opponent to pass into you you know by holding a lot of contextual stuff waiting for the game to defend for you you can see here again i'm holding l2 that's me obviously manually reading this so you can mix and match but here you can see that my players are going to win the ball back for me now this works brilliant when you call teammate pressure in like this but there also is a big downfall of it and i've showed this example here you win the ball back we're in a good position we're going forward we get the ball overturned and i'm going to just let my ai defend for me terrible rush out then we're going to call van dyke over and he gives away a penalty so the ai gives away a penalty there because it is kind of a home miss that you go straight in now one of the questions i get the whole time lads is how to stop easy goals right and the short answer to this without bullshitting ye is that there is no way to really stop easy goals because you are going to concede stupid goals you are going to get screwed every now and again when you play online it's just the way it goes man there's a lot of factors online obviously the way people play is a big factor you can see this guy spams forward with the quick or with the one touch and it goes through my legs because i'm holding the contextual block and it doesn't work out now what happens is when you get this sort of stuff happening you just have to grin and bear it man it just comes with 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 the with the way that the game is obviously with v2.4 again here you know a simple kick out ball gets turned over i cover the gap as best as i can players just don't interact don't really kind of want it and it nearly concedes in a goal so the first thing i would say is if you are conceding a lot of stupid goals is to revert back to setting your team up right and then obviously just getting a little bit more comfortable playing uh, on the ball you know you are going to concede goals but the thing i would look at it lads right the way i set up my team every time is to not give your opponent easy points don't let your opponent have an easy win out of you right yes you are going to concede counter-attacking goals yes you are going to get screwed every now and again but be competitive, you know, get comfortable on the ball, because chances are, right, when you really, when you um, give away the ball from a counter-attacking position, as you're seeing here, you will get, like, goals scored on you 90% of the time, because you've committed forward, your AI is obviously configured that way, that that's the way that the game is, is that when you are in a position to move forward with the ball, the AI switches off from defense to attack, and it, it takes a bit longer to actually get back into that defensive mode, right? You'll see even here against the AI, when we're playing against the AI, when we're just kind of rushing around, brilliant wins of the ball, then we try to clear it with Foden, we're going to go to back central, touch on, touch on, and that's when you can get caught on the counter-attack, especially if you're playing against the AI, or if you're playing against somebody that is not switched on, right? And we do get the goal. That is a perfect example of catching the AI on the break. You know, it's the simple things here. Same with this, right? This guy is defending me very automatic. You know, he's letting the auto defend and do the job for him. And my eyes light up because I know I'm going to be able to draw this guy in, create serious space, and then finish in the back of the net. Now, we also have when you're playing through the central, if you're playing quick counter or long ball counter, when you pack the midfield and when you pack the central areas here, you're always going to have a player that's going to be able to pop up like Messi does there. Now, last but not least, we have the one key secret tip, right? Now, lads, if you want another video on this, let me know and we will go into even more detail on it. I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes because a lot of people have the same questions. I'm running out of breath. But this one key secret tip has saved me a lot of times, especially as you go up to divisions, right? What we're going to be doing here very, very easily is going into our actual player instructions. So we've set our team up how we want it. We're happy enough with that. And then we're going to go into individual instructions and we are going to go defensive on our DMF. And we are also going to go defensive on our left back or right back, depending on how offensive our players are up the pitch. So if we've got a 4-3-3 as we have here, I'm going to be bringing the ball forward with Kimmich, with Ronaldinho, with Depay, with Salah, and with Matoma. And I'm also going to be manually bombarding forward with the likes of Davies or else Maldini on the right. Even though they're set up defensively as a centre back, that's how we're going to do it, right? But what we're going to do is when we are in an actual game, this man marking won't be greyed out. So we are going to put man marking of Sergio Busquets on our opponent's centre forward or SS or AMF. 
And he's going to track back defensively that we don't need to worry when we're actually, you know, not controlling Busquets. We can just let him track back the AMF or the SS or the CF and it won't really make a difference to our shape when we are there. The main thing you want to do with your shape as you are defending as a collective, as a team, right? Whether you uh, manually or auto or you're on the upper echelon of, you know, being an e-football player and you're a really good Division 1, Division 2 player is, you know, the same basics apply all the time, right? When you strip it back and you strip back conceding stupid goals and getting caught in the counter and the game just screwing you, all you want to be doing is keeping your shape of your back three or back four, depending on your formation, and plugging any holes, right? Don't let your opponent, you know, have a space where they can exploit, right? Because eventually you will come undone. So that is it for me, lads. It's a complete defending tutorial. We've covered everything that we possibly could. Let me know any feedback. If you want any anything else, let me know. We might do a part two to this, and I will talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you're enjoying the content. Daily uploads, live streams Thursday and Friday. Let's get it. Peace.